Hey everyone, coming to you today from Assateague Island in Maryland. If you guys like horses, then this video is definitely for you. The reason we're here today is because this is a national park known for having approximately 80 to 84 wild ponies and horses roaming around on the island. This is, a, I think, it's 37 miles long, and two-thirds of it lies on the grounds of Maryland, one-third is Virginia. And it's pretty much the only place you can come and experience wild horses and ponies roaming around free. You're able to get up close to them, but you're not allowed to feed them or touch them, but it's pretty much as close as you're going to come to being up, up close to wild horses. One thing you have to watch out for is that there's uh, horse poop everywhere around here. As you can see, there's a walking bridge that we're on. And it's a beautiful area here. I mean, there's a lot of area to cover. You could drive around, bike, walk, you could camp here. There's beaches here. And uh, it's more or less like a scavenger hunt. You're gonna walk around and try and find out where the horses are. And it, I'm not sure if I mentioned, but there's around 80 to 84 horses here. And uh, we're gonna check out the areas here, see if we can find some of them. There's also some other wildlife here too. So hope you guys enjoy this video and let's get going. So this walking bridge goes for quite a ways and it splits off. We're gonna go to the right, which takes you to a nice little beach area. We were here back in December and uh, it's nice and quiet here at that time of year, not many visitors, but since we're here for vacation, we decided to check it out again. And um, we did see some horses driving in, but hopefully we could find some up close. There's some crabs in the water there. It's like one, two, three, four. Hi, there's one in the... Oh, there's one in the weeds right there, coming out. I think those are blue crabs. There's some type of fish right there too, see it? Yeah, it's like long and pointy. One thing I forgot to mention too is that the entrance fee is $20 per vehicle and that's good for I believe six days of entry so you could come more than once and you can also get an annual pass for only $40. You can come as many times as you want within a 12 month period. And along the way you also find some informational plaques which will tell you some information about the area and the wildlife. And just up here is one of the beaches. Head over there next. That was all I'm always trying to come in. Oh. I so weird, There's like riffles in the sand here. Look at this, we just found a clam in the bay here, okay. unopened. Can I hold it? Is there anything inside? Uh, yeah, it's going to be the clam meat. Ooh. Found our second clam, this one's even bigger. <laughs> it's like buried in the sand here. I want to find one now. Let's see if we can find another one. Yeah! Yep, got another clam. Yay! That's three. Why is this so shiny? Like yellow. They're underwater. Oh, Aside from being a little bit breezy today, it's absolutely beautiful here. Got my feet in the water. We're walking around and how many clams do you catch? Three. Three clams so far. Oh, look at it. It's a little crab right here. Oh, no, it's not. I really found a horseshoe crab. So it's dead. I don't know if it is. No, look at all the parts around the ocean. Look at all those legs. They're everywhere. 
Oh yeah, it is dead. Okay. It's a carpet. Look at where the ice would be. It's like a skeleton. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It still has its pointer. Whoa. Pretty awesome, right? Yeah. I freaked out when I saw it. I'm like, what the heck? So we have some evidence of horses being here, but no horses here right now, so we're going to move on to a different area and hopefully we'll have some better luck. That's a big one right there. Oh, down here. That's a good size one. Mm -hmm. See a little one? No. He's out there. Oh, yeah. Going up to the fish. And there's another one over there. There's four. So how many shells there are there? Look at them fighting. Just three of them fighting? One crab ran away. Big one won. Like a natural food chain in there. There's little fishes and bacteria, and then there's the crabs who are eating the fish. Mm -hmm. There's the bacteria. You can't see it, it's small. It's what the fish feed on, like plankton. One, So we're at location number two. This is called the Old Ferry Landing. And there's a little shack, some beach area, and we got some kayakers, some crabbers, fishers. I should say people fishing, but it's a nice little spot here. No horses yet, but we'll explore around here and check it out. It even teaches you how to catch some shellfish and gives you some information about them. They're almost like mussels. Shellfish. And some more information if you want to get yourself some blue crab. And it teaches you about the marsh and the tides. Pretty informative. Just saw a little plaque here which explains why this is called Ferry Landing, and I'll give you a little bit closer look at it. There's 80 some horses here. Where are they all at? But, uh, this area is still pretty cool. Very popular with fishing uh, people that are fishing. Uh, we got a few more spots to check. This seems to be like the biggest game of hide and go seek ever. We're checking all around this island. And we saw some horses in the distance on the way in, but now we're checking all the spots that we that we checked um, when we were here in the winter time. And we're coming up empty. We just came from the beach area, uh, which was not too busy actually. It was pretty pretty empty but nice. And now we're on this walking trail that comes out to a marsh area. So uh, if we find any up here, I'll show them to you. There's a little swamp or marsh area that we came about. Very dark water. It's probably a uh, drinking spot for the ho horses. It's peaceful and relaxing though. Freshwater oasis. So that's the trail that we just came on where it started. And we're gonna follow it out. I think it comes to like another raised dock area, like a walking platform. And it gives you a pretty good uh, overview of the land. So maybe if anything we'll spot some in the, in the distance. So we have a nice lay of the land here. A lot of marsh area. And straight over there is where that little 
little shack was where everyone was crabbing and fishing. No horses yet, but still some beautiful scenery. Well, thank you to a good Samaritan. We found the horses uh, all the way over there. Is a little white speck. That's actually where we found the clams and that horseshoe crab. So we're going to return over there, and hopefully they'll still be there when we get there. Well, we started our trek all the way up there after we uh, left our last lo location and we we're walking the shoreline and we were just about to give up and believe it or not we found the horses so we're gonna try and get as close as we can without being a nuisance or a threat but I can't believe they're still here so we'll get a little bit closer and we'll pick up from there there they are. Looks like we got one, two, five of them standing and one of them laying down. Looks like the little one's getting up. Oh, maybe not. This is only six out of like 80. 84 horses. You know what kind of horses they are? One of them, the white one, is a pinto because it has brown spots and the other ones I don't know. <laughs> it's like they're just hanging out, enjoying the day. That stuff that they're laying on right there, it's like that mossy seaweed stuff. When I walked on it before, it's nice and cool, so he's probably laying on that because it's cool and comfortable. I'm currently standing in the water to get our view. This is about as close as I'm going to get because I don't want to disturb them. Only maybe about 25, 30 feet away. When we were here back in December, uh, we were over near the beach area and we saw, what's the baby ones called? Uh, a full. A full. And it was like half the size of these ones. And one thing I did learn too is that when the horses do breed, that after they have one, I guess you could call it like a, one birth, they do, um, I don't know what the proper terminology is, but basically take away the producing area of the male horses, so that way it's not getting overpopulated, but they do allow them to mate one time and breed one time, and then they, you know, obviously put a stop to that. Just have to say, if you do love horses and you're ever in the area of Maryland or Virginia, definitely consider coming here. It's a national park, so the horses are protected, but they pretty much have free roaming rights to this property, to the, the whole island. So you never know where you're going to find them. We spent a good hour at least looking for them. And this is only a very small portion of them. There's upwards of 80 somewhere else on the island, but it's 37 miles long, so they have a lot of a lot of places to hide if they want to. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's time to go to the bathroom. One thing I feel bad for them is that there's a lot of these biting flies around here. You see them constantly shaking their skin. There's these big black flies that pack a pretty good punch. I've gotten bit by a couple of them. They're scary. Yeah, they're big too.
you do come though, it is illegal to feed them though, so don't come trying to do that, even though it'll draw them close to you. If you do get caught, you are subject to a fine. And there are people around here watching, it's called uh, Pony Patrol. And they wear green vests and they ride bikes and golf carts and just to make sure that you're not getting too close and trying to disturb them. Even though they are used to people being here, they still are wild horses. And that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed today's adventure at Assateague Island in Maryland. Like I said, if you love horses, camping, walking, biking, fishing, crabbing, this place has everything. And for a $20 pass, you get a full week's access. And for only $40, if you're in the area, you can come back as many times as you want in a 12-month period. If you did happen to enjoy this video, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, subscribe now and ring that notification bell. That way you don't miss any future uploads or live streams. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.